Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. My name's Kirsty, and today we are going to be making fermented sauerkraut, or we're going to be starting the fermenting process anyways. Fermenting sauerkraut is super easy, you guys. All you're going to need is um, a head of cabbage or two, I'm going to do two, and salt and a jar and with a lid. And that's all you're going to need. It's so easy and it is the, I think it's the best place to start for fermenting, honestly. Um, okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to weigh your cabbage. Whether that is going to be with a home scale or at the grocery store, I already, I know that both of these are almost exactly two pounds. And what you're going to do is you're going to do 2% of the weight or roughly two teaspoons per pound of cabbage, okay? So I'm going to need eight teaspoons of salt for four pounds of cabbage, right? Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is we are going to first, of course, we have to shred the cabbage. Um, I am going to peel the outer layers off. These are gonna go to the pig. And then you're going to peel one more layer off that you're going to save. And all th those we will show you later. Now you can cut these by hand um, if you would if you would like to or if you don't have a food processor. I am going to take advantage of my food processor with the slicing blade on it right today because I don't really want to cut four pounds of cabbage by hand. <laughs> okay, let's get that leaf we're going to save. And now we are going to cut this into quarters. All right, we're going to cut out the core just like that. Again, gonna go to the pig. All right. There's no food scraps that ever go to waste around here. It all gets fed to some animal. Okay, so my food processor has to be clicked in and engaged like this. Here, that I don't know if you can hear that click. But that has to click before I can turn it on. And just like that. So it, it takes a little more time because of that safety feature. But with little kids around, it's good to have, right? All right, so if it's one head of cabbage in here, before I have to empty it, we are going to empty, oh, <laughs> this is what we're gonna be using to pound down the cabbage, so that's why that's there. You can actually get a tool called a kraut pounder. Um, I do not have one, I have a wooden dowel rolling pin that I love, so that is what I'm going to be using. All right, so let's get that out of there. Actually, it looks like some big leaves didn't get chopped up all the way, but that's okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put about half of the cabbage in here of the first head. So, this is going to be like a layering process, all right, guys? So, for each half of a head of cabbage, I'm going to do two tablespoons, or sorry, for each half of a head, I'm going to do two teaspoons of salt sprinkled over it. The salt helps extract the liquid out of the cabbage and um, it also helps with the fermentation process. So you're going to pound it down a bit and this is going to release the, flu the, the water out of the cabbage and that is actually with fermenting you have to make sure that you have liquid over your solids, right? So the pounding of the cabbage is actually going to take the liquid out and when we pack it into our jar, we want to make sure that we have it all the way up. We want to make sure that we have it all the way up above the cat and the cabbage is down here. We also have weights. We'll talk about that later, but right now we're just going to pound, keep pounding this down. All right, we'll get the next two teaspoons on there so that I don't forget after every layer, put it on. And 
and it is important to know how much your cabbage weighs because I, I have heard that of people ending up with um, their their sauerkraut being too um, salty. So make sure that you know how much it weighs so that you can um, prepare it with the proper amount of salt. Of course, I think it goes without saying, but be careful with your blades on your food processor if you have one. They can be super sharp. Mine even came with like a warning label because of how sharp these blades are. Oh, so we're gonna pound down the second layer. So salt and sugar will both, salt and sugar will both um, extract the liquid from uh, products. So if you put like salt on cabbage or salt on anything, its job is to absorb moisture, right? That's why you don't ever wanna leave your salt open in your kitchen because it'll absorb and get chunky. Um, sugar does the same thing. So if you were to be making, like if you were trying to extract the liquid out of raspberries, you would sprinkle sugar over the top of the raspberries, wait about 45 minutes and almost all of the liquid will be pulled out into that, uh, into a sugar syrup. All right, we cleaned up our workstation a bit. I almost forgot to put the last two teaspoons of salt in there. All right, now we're just gonna pound it. Okay, so now we are going to let this sit for about an hour and let it, uh, let the juices come out of it, okay? You can toss it every now and then. Um, I think I actually will, just to. You should have it pretty well layered with the salt and actually like at the bottom, it's already starting to juice out of there. But I wanted to see I wanted to see how it looked. Okay, you're gonna pound that down again. This is the perfect thing to do if you, you know, you're you're a little on edge one day. You can just sit here and like beat the crap out of the sauerkraut. <laughs> All right, we are going to let this sit for a bit. We will be back. All right, you guys. So we have we have let this sit for probably about an hour now. Got nice and juicy. And we are going to pack our jar. Now you need to make sure that you're you have a clean jar. Yep. Yep. Hi Colton. Say hi. Yeah, say hi. <laughs> Colton's helping me today. All right, so we are going to pack the half gallon jar like we um, like we did with the layers of the, when we layered this and packed it down. So we're gonna put some in there and then pack it down really well and then add some more. That's a fermentation lid. Yeah. No, no, don't take it apart. Here, here's this one. All right, so we're gonna pack it down. Remember that you want, your, your end goal here is to have the juice above the top of the cabbage. So all of that juice is what is going to be hopefully over the top of our cabbage.
All right. We're going to pound that down. So the reason that you don't want any of the cabbage above the liquid line is because it could mold. So you really want it to stay down below that water line. And as, as the day goes on, there's going to be more water in here. Um, so I'm not super worried about it right now. Now, remember the piece of pieces of cabbage that we saved? All right, now we're going to use them. I'm going to tear a big chunk off there. All right, so you're going to pack your, your cabbage leaf down in there, and this is going to hold all of the little pieces of cabbage underneath the liquid so that hopefully um, it doesn't end up molding, right? Okay, so weights. You have a couple different options for weights. You can either use a four ounce little jelly jar that you can just will fit right down in there, or you can use a fermentation weight. We're going to use a fermentation weight, but the jelly jars do work fine. You're just going to put that in and it holds the, it's going to hold the cabbage leaf down. And as the liquid builds up inside of there, it's going to come up over the top of the, this cabbage leaf. So it'll be completely submerged. All right. So lids, there's a couple different options for lids. You can either use one of these, um, one of these lids just from Walmart and they are just wide mouth plastic lids. However, if you use them, you're gonna have to burp your jars every day. So you're just gonna wanna unscrew it a little bit and then screw it back down and that'll release the gases out. You don't want to take it all the way off and put it back on because that is introducing bad bacteria into your ferment. Okay, so we are going to be using a fermentation lid. You're gonna fill this up halfway with water and then put this little cap on there, okay? So what the way that this works is as the gases build up inside of the jar, it's gonna come out and it's going to push this little piece on the inside up and it's going to release the gases through the water and out through the top of this, okay? The bad bacteria that's, that could be in the air or in your kitchen or whatever, can't go back through the water and into your ferment. So that's why we prefer to use a fermentation lid it is not necessary. There's the, you know, people have been fermenting for literally thousands of years without these, <laughs> but they are great. And it's easier to just take this and put it in your pantry and forget about it for 10 days, right? Or longer now, <laughs> but anyways, so once that is done, you're going to want to put your whole jar into some sort of vessel. So it, whether it's sitting on a plate or in a bowl or in a cake pan or pie pan, whatever, but you're going to want to put it in something because it does get to the point where it comes up and it'll ooze out of the, the ring a little bit. Um, and then sometimes if it gets like really built up, if, if we had this full up here, it would, it could like go all over the counter and stuff. So make sure that you have this in a bowl and, uh, or something you're, you're going to want to let your sauerkraut sit for three to 10 days, depending on how sour you like it. Um, ours is probably going to sit for about seven days. Uh, it depends on the temperature of your house. And if it's really cold, it's going to ferment slower. If it's really hot, it's going to ferment a lot faster. So just keep an eye on it. Um, after day three or so, I would say, check it, taste it, see if you like it. If you want it more sour, then let it go for a couple more days. Once it is to your liking, you're going to take one of these lids, or unless you're already using it, put it on it and you're going to store it in the fridge. And that's it. It's that easy. And it's so healthy for you guys. It's full of probiotics. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. And if you want to see more ferments, please leave it in the comments. Give us a like and please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye. Hi, guys. Well, it's been a week since uh, Kirsty made the sauerkraut. So we're going to give it a taste test. See how it is. Um, depending on if it's ready or not with the fermentation process, uh, we'll either put it in the refrigerator or we'll put it back in the pantry for another week and let it keep fermenting. All right, we'll get this weight taken out of here. All right. If you guys haven't got these yet, they're amazing. Okay, these weights, they'll hold down all the cabbage or whatever you're fermenting and it keeps it nice and clean 
And then same thing with the one-way water lock valve. Uh, these things are great. They don't allow bacteria in there. It's awesome. All right. Wow, look at that. So like I said, she did this a week ago now. So we're going to give it a taste. All right. Mmm, it smells really good. That is really good. It's got a good salty, excuse me. It's got a good salty flavor. It's nice and crisp. It's very good. That's got a good flavor to it. So I'd say one week in the jar and it's good to go in the refrigerator. That was really good. Hey William, would you like to take a bite? You want to try it? What do you think? It's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. It's got a good salty and crispy flavor, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good on a pastrami sandwich, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Or hot dogs or something? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. At the next barbecue, we'll have to do that. All right, guys. Well, have a good night. And uh, thank you for watching Kirshner Farmstead. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see a video on. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Have a good night.